Blog Talk Radio. Franchise interviews from Eastern Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Welcome to Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Listen to interviews with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts, and attorneys. And now, welcome your host, Marty McDermott, and Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 15 years now, we've been asking the entrepreneurs one well, I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and we have a great show. Well, today we're going to be talking about Undercover Boss and the Undercover Boss Experience. You know, over the years, we've had many guests on Franchise Interviews appear on Undercover Boss. And if you haven't seen the show, Undercover Boss, it's a two-time Emmy Award-winning reality series that follows high-level executives as they slip anonymously into the rank and file of their own organizations. And each week, a different leader sacrifices the comfort of their corner office for an undercover mission to examine the inner workings of their operations. So we're going to begin the podcast with a clip we did with Catherine Monson many years ago of Fast Size. And Catherine's going to talk about her undercover boss experience. Then we're going to play a clip from Gigi Butler of Gigi's Cupcakes. And Gigi's going to share her experience as being undercover boss. And then lastly, we're going to play a previous interview we did with Gary Finley of Restoration One. And Gary is going to be appearing on Undercover Boss Friday, March 11th at 8 p.m. Eastern on CBS. So you don't want to miss that. And let's go right into our interview with Catherine Monson talking about her Undercover Boss experience. My wife's favorite show is Undercover Boss, and she said she'd kill me if I didn't ask you about it. So she said, you have to ask about it. I said, we usually don't talk about that stuff, but I, so I have to ask you about it. I mean, what was that experience like? I, I've heard, you know, that I guess it was like May. Was it in May it's going to run? May or 4th. May That's 4th. Right. What was that like May. for you? Well, it was, first off, I was certainly surprised and, and really humbled that uh, Studio Lambert and CBS sought me out. I thought that was mm-hmm. very exciting. Um, and, you know, first there was some trepidation. You know, when they said, would you like to do yeah. it, you think about, oh, my goodness, what if you make a mistake on camera? What if you embarrass the brand? But as we evaluated the opportunity, we really felt that it would be an outstanding exposure for the Fast Science oh, yeah. brand. And uh, then, you know, they said to me, um, do you have a disguise in mind? And I just <laughs> happened that I did. So I said, I want to be a goth rocker chick. I and saw it on this, the internet. Yeah. <laughs> I saw some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, fabulous, you're the first boss that actually had a disguise in mind. And so I got to be a goth rocker chick. And um, my my executive producer said, you know, you actually take on a different persona when you're wearing these clothes. You sit differently. Yeah. You speak differently. You have a slang to you. But it was a great experience. You know, I, visit a, I spend a lot of time visiting our franchisees. I really do. Um, I'm in a lot of Fast Lines locations. It's just the way that I choose to run the company. I really right. want to be where the rubber meets the road. But I'm always with the franchisee, and they know ahead of time that I'm coming, and the center mm-hmm. is in perfect, clean condition. Right. And here I'm going in under the guise of um, filming a pilot for a reality TV show called Second Chances where somebody down and out on their luck gets the opportunity to earn a second chance. Well, I'm working wow. with employees directly. They don't know who I am, and I'm getting to see a different side of the business. It was an absolutely great experience. It was, um, I will say, exhausting because, you know, yeah. I I equate it to giving a general session speech in front of a 1,000 people. Mm, but typically, yeah. you only do that for an hour, and then you get the rest. But this, you have, right. you know, two HD TV cameras on you, literally – Eight to ten, sometimes twelve hours a day, multiple days in a row. So it was uh, it was exhausting, but it was fun. And what I found was we have amazing employees who are really dedicated to doing a great job for our customers that really care about the brand. And and you'll uh, get to see me ruin some signs. So um. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. I, I teach for Kaplan University, and I have my students watch the show as well, and we talk about it in the seminar. You know, so we're all going to be watching it. You know, it's it's. It's going to be fun. I can't wait to to see it now that you know I've had the privilege to speak with you. It it really changes things, you know. So, um, looking forward to that. 
I'm such a big fan of, of Undercover Boss, Gigi. I've been watching it, you know, since the show started, you know, and of course I saw you and you did such a great job, by the way. I was wondering, you know, did, did your standing up on stage or all of that experience that you had, did that make you comfortable with the experience of doing Undercover Boss? Well, it probably made me, it probably helped. But, yeah. you know, they, it, I, was ne- I was not prepared. I had no idea what was going to happen, and I was right. scared to death. I've never acted. And they sure. literally take you on a bus, don't tell you where you're going. You know, you end up in the first place I winded up in is Atlanta. And they dressed me up and said, go for it. You don't know this person, but get in there. And I'm like, uh, 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 they're going to know me. They're going to know me. But you know what? Right. They didn't know me. They didn't know you. <laughs> Which was great. They did. They would not have said the things they said if they knew me. Trust me, <laughs> that would have fantastic. never come out of their mouth. But um, they, it was. Yeah, I think it did help me. I think it. It was. You know, the hardest, three hardest things I've ever done is birth a child, birth a company, and be on Undercover Boss. Wow. But <laughs> the most three rewarding things of my life are those three things. Same three. So sometimes the hardest, hardest things we do wow. are the most rewarding. So. That's a life lesson there too, isn't it, Gigi? Just I'm writing down, you know, as you're talking, just taking notes, you know, and it's just it, it's it, that's a, certainly a, a big life lesson. We have this uh, great quotes in uh, franchising podcast. I'm going to have to put that one in there because I I think it really is, um, you know, it, it, it's really very clever. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite scenes, of course, is the, the the swirl as you're watching, you know, just watching your face as the one gentleman is trying to explain to you how to do the swirl. <laughs> you know, it, it's yeah. just such a great thing. I'm sure you get. Uh, it, it, how is it? How is it? Has it changed you in any way, Gigi, like as far as like recognition goes or, um, you know, things like that? Do people recognize you now uh, by being on, on the show? I think a little bit. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, I had I had I was in um, Florida this last week. I was on in Seaside and and I had someone come up to me and say, are you Gigi? And I said, and I wow. was in, a, you know, hat and, hat sure. and sunglasses and, you know, <laughs> right, right. and and I know makeup, and I'm like, um, yeah. And they're like, oh, we saw your show. It was just on, you know, the OWN channel last week, and we loved it. And I said, oh, thank you. So, I mean, sometimes uh, in Nashville, I, I think I'm a little bit more, you know, because I'm in the – yeah, a little bit more. But, right. And in places where I have the cupcake shops, I mean, in 24, we have 100 locations, and so Atlanta and Texas and Oklahoma, and yeah, I – I think it a little bit. I mean, I'm not sure. like a star, but yeah, there's right, a little bit right, of Right, right, absolutely. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to a very special edition of Host Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and as we were saying earlier, we have a great show today. We're meeting with Gary Finley. And Gary is a veteran of the franchising industry. Gary Finley has over 25 years' experience in helping entrepreneurs build over 9,500 franchise locations worldwide with only two brands. He now oversees one of the fastest growing restoration franchises in the country as CEO of Restoration One, a franchise brand with more than 120 locations open in development. Hi, Gary. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Marty, I'm doing well. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic, Gary. It's it's a privilege to uh, finally have you on the show. You know, I've been following your career for such a long time now. What does it feel like when you hear that number 9,500? Does it still give you a thrill? It it does, I, you know. Actually, pretty amazing to me, especially come from uh, from my background. I tell people I'm a bit of a redneck. I grew up in the country, and so for me to to uh, have uh, had that under my belt is a great thing. You know, they don't they don't come very often, but uh, right. yeah, I'm excited to have been part of that. It's a great story, Gary. You wouldn't know this. I teach marketing for uh, Kaplan University, Gary, and one of the marketing textbooks we used to use spoke about curves. We had this big section in there talking about you and, and curves and the success of curves. You, you had a similar experience when you went back to school, didn't you? <laughs> I did. It was really I funny. I, I, I didn't, I got out of high school and not, you know, not one of the kids that said, Hey, I'm heading off to college. Where I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I'm an entrepreneur at heart, so I wanted to make money. So uh, I actually started to work for the railroad and eventually uh, got back into franchising. We launched curves and had a great success story. After that, I said, look, I think I'll go back to college and get my degree. So I went back to uh, uh, University of Mary Hardin Baylor to get my degree in, yeah. in uh, business. And uh, first day of class, we're sitting there in, in our marketing class, and our instructor says, hey, read chapters one through three. And I get home and I open it up, 
chapter number one is the story of curves, and I said, I think I'll make an A in this class. <laughs> I love that story. It's one of my favorite stories in doing the show over 10 years. I just thought that was fantastic when I heard that. I said, what, what a yeah, thrill that must fun. have been for you. You know, that's really fantastic. What do you like most about franchising, Gary? Because you've been involved in franchising. You, you got involved at a very young age. What is it that you like most about franchising? Yeah, I, I started, Marty, when I was about uh, 20 years old uh, and started yeah. with a company that had one franchise back then. And and uh, what I have loved about it and really got intrigued early, early, early on was, you know, how you could take an idea and a concept and spread it across the world uh, mm-hmm. very rapidly in most cases and right. to be able to offer, uh, you know, an opportunity for people to go into work for themselves. And, and most people – you know, they, they don't want to have to figure it all out. They want to come right. in and have a proven system. So mm-hmm. when you put that system together and you go out there and you have something that is worthwhile, it, it's just fun watching that. And so for me, you know, I've actually represented probably 20 different brands all the way from uh, dog daycares to kids' cooking schools to right. fitness to uh, now restoration. So, you know, I, I found that uh, – it, you know, franchising is franchising. It's just you. Each time I I change what uh, we may be, you know, putting out there for the consumer. Right. But for the most part, it, uh, the goal is still the same, and that's to put people in business. What makes a great franchise, Gary? Uh, you know, it, it, you've you've seen this because you've been involved for such a long time now. You know, there's so many different opportunities out there. You know, some of them are good, and some of them are not so good. But you know, from your experience, what makes a good franchise? Yeah, you know, I would say that uh, for the most part. You know, I'm 55 years old, and I, uh, you know, I wouldn't say I'm at the end of my career, but a right. few years ago, after after being in this for 25 years, I said if I were going to uh, open my own business today, I'm I'm mm-hmm. the typical person out there looking for a business. I would say, you know, what am I looking for? And so right. I started putting those things together, and I said, you know, number one, I don't want brick and mortar. I want uh, right. low investment. I want uh, high margins. I want low overhead. Uh, and I want re- as close to recession and resistant as I can get without right. having to go back to 2008 and the things that we experienced. And so for me, uh, the service industry matched that. And so uh, a great system is one uh, that meets the, meets the times. What are people looking for? What do, they, what do they need every day? If you wake up tomorrow morning, step out of bed, and you step in three feet of water, you can't say, hey, I'll fix that later. It's got to be done. So, right. you know, you're going to need a plumber. You're going to need a restoration company. So a great company has uh, good processes uh, and systems in place, and uh, it's been successful. And so that's that's what I look for uh, and, and find something that, is again, is going to be something that the consumers need. And that's what you saw, I imagine, in Restoration One, Gary. You know, and why? You know, of course, you got involved in the company. And again, it seems like you have this, you know, this gift or this skill, you know, where you can identify, you know, a, a good opportunity. Maybe we could talk a little bit about the history of Restoration One. Yeah. So uh, I got involved in Restoration One. I'd say about three years ago, and I went in um, really as a consultant. Uh, I start. I was mm-hmm. doing consulting for about six different brands. Some of them were brand-new startups, and then some of them right. were emerging, like Restoration One. They had about 22 locations, and uh, they were doing well, uh, but there were just no systems and processes in place whatsoever, uh, right. and not really even a team. And, you know, it was just the, the owner of the company understood uh, the restoration business, but not franchising. So, uh, he was smart enough to know what he didn't know, and he, and he uh, reached out to me and said, look, you know, I, I need to get this in the hands of someone that knows what they're doing in uh, taking a franchise company and developing it. So that's how we got involved. And so in the last uh, – I started off doing sales for them in development, and then I took over uh, January of 2016 as a CEO, and he said, look, hands off. I'm going to back up. Now you do what you do best and run with it. And so we took it over and – so it's kind of a uh, you know where we were before Gary and where we were after Gary and, and right. we've had some uh, tremendous success. Uh, added on uh, over 120 locations in that 18 months, and we moved in our rankings of franchise 500 from number you know 393 to number 96. And That's great. Uh, so it's been tremendous, tremendous growth. 
how do you describe the concept, Gary? I mean, if you're at a, a franchise show, you know, you've been to a lot of them over the years, you know, and someone, you know, were mm-hmm. to come up to the Restoration One booth and they say, you know, the typical question sometimes is, you know, so what do you guys do? How do you typically respond? Yeah, so I go back, you know, I'll tell you, I go back to the things I told you all ago, and that is, mm-hmm. you know, what are you looking for in a business? And trying to find right. out what they want, because it's more important. One of the successes we're having is the degree of people we're bringing into the business. And so it's just mm-hmm. as important for me as it is for them. And so I talk to them about what are their goals, what are they looking for. And then I explain to them our industry. And our industry truly is a recession-resistant industry because right. you cannot control uh, when a pop's going to break. You cannot control when you're going to find mold in your home or when you're going to have right. – you know, small fire, those things just happen. And so that something has to, to come along and someone be able to take care of those. So I, I describe it, we're in the service industry. Uh, we are not, uh, you know, we're looking to, as a franchisee, we're not looking for the man in the van. We're looking for somebody who wants to create a business opportunity. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it's not, I, I'm the first to admit, it's not the sexiest business. But what I'm mm-hmm. finding today is that the people that are buying this, they are executives. They come from high-level jobs, and they all are saying the same thing I'm at. Hey, I looked at some of these other things, but this, this fits what I'm looking for. I don't want to go all in right now. I'm at the end of my career, but I want a business that ramps up quickly and as a need that people have. So that's kind of, you know, that's my elevator pitch with people is this is a business that – um, meets those criteria. You can get in uh, and, and ramp up quickly and and uh, have a successful large business. And the industry, like you were saying, Gary, I mean, imagine it's huge. I mean, since we've moved here to Pennsylvania, we've been here about 13 years now. We've had two incidents mm-hmm. already with water damage. So, I mean, it happens to pretty much everyone at some point, mm-hmm. doesn't it? It happened to me. <laughs> so that was uh, – <laughs> and, and it happened about that time I was uh, looking at this criteria of what I would look for in a business – uh, had somebody that was uh, in our home. We had just, uh, uh, in the process of selling it, came home one day. The bottom floor was flooded and uh-huh. uh, had a group of guys, a local company, came in. Uh, and, you know, they, they said, uh, they didn't say, but, but, you know, the people that put my original floors in said, I don't think you'll ever save them. They right. saved the floors. They saved everything in there. And they were in and out in about five days. And it was a $30,000 job. And I said, holy smoke. Uh, this is a great thing because me as the consumer, um, I had very little to do with it, you know. And so right. I said, you know, um, I watched how it worked and how easy it was and said, you know, I am the consumer. And then I start finding, okay, my neighbor has one of these things happen. So uh, if I'm the average consumer, then um, I can make this work. So, yeah, there, it, it happens all the time. Ho- hopefully I won't have two more like yourself, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it did, it did happen. It, and it will happen to most people. Yes, it will happen to most people. And little did you know that, you know, you would be the CEO one day of, of Restoration One, right? It was kind of like a sign from God, I guess you could say that. Absolutely, you know? yep, which, is, which has been the story of my life. I, did, I, didn't know, I didn't know a lot of things when I was, a, when I was uh, 17 years old out uh, throwing hay up on top of a, a haystack. I had no clue right. then that one day I'd look up and I would be uh, running an a, a international company with 9,000 locations. So, you know what, by the grace of God, uh, you know, I guess I had some favor. That's terrific. What's been one of the most interesting things that's happened to you, Gary, since joining Restoration One? I know you probably have a lot of stories. I mean, you have probably hundreds of stories, you know, throughout your career, but specifically with Restoration One, is there anything that stands out? You know, um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. As long as I've been doing this, um, mm-hmm. I have every concept I've ever had and I've worked with, you know, I had franchise conventions and conferences like most franchisors do. Right. And this is the only time we we had our third one this last year. And one of the comments that I've made to people over and over and over again, you know, there have been times uh, when I was with a concept that when I went to the conference, I I darn near needed security to walk around with me because franchisees would just not be happy. Uh, This is one to where, People are coming up and saying, thank you for, you know, doing all the things that you've put in place. Uh, And uh, it's just been, you know, I I would say the thing surprised me is the quality of the franchisees that we've got Mm -hmm. in the business and their success and just their happiness in the system. So that's been a little rare for me. I mean, you know, it's not that it's always been that way, but I've never went to three 
conf the first three conferences and not had somebody catch me in the corner to complain about something. So right. that tells me we're, do we're, we're doing things right. So I would say that, you know, that's probably the most amazing thing to me and just the, the opportunities that we've been providing to people. You're talking about your franchisees, Gary. You know, I mean, what do you look for in your franchisees? You were mentioning that, you know, there's a nice diversity, you know, you know, people retiring, you know, perhaps coming from corporate America. Are there any specific characteristics that you look for in your franchisees with Restoration One? Yeah, you know, today it's just a different buyer. It's a different mm -hmm. buyer than it was, you know, 20 years ago and even different right. 10 years and five years ago. So these most of these people are coming out of corporate America, uh, and they're looking at, again, I said it earlier, that we really are truly not the company to come to if you're just the person that wants to be the man in a van and you say, you know, I want to do this a little part-time. These are people right. that want to build organizations. And so we're looking, that's who we're looking for. So they're coming out of, uh, you know, the executives with, with high-level uh, companies that are out there. I mean, I've got people from Wall Street. i got bankers. Uh, so wow. while, again, this is not a, a sexy business, they right. understand the opportunity, and, and as being a business person, that's what they're looking for. So we, we look for people that can build a business and understand the economics. So we spend a lot of time by providing software on how can you manage your business, not just run out there and, and run around with your hair on fire, but actually have a, a plan and a procedure to do it. You're talking about software, Gary. How has technology played a role in the business to today from maybe from when Restoration One first started? Yeah, we, we've had to do quite a bit. When we first came on, we mm -hmm. did not have a uh, an operating management uh, software for the franchisee, so each one, everybody was kind of using their own thing. So right. uh, that was the first, first thing we did. I brought on a, a, a staff of people. You know, my staff is half of them come from the restoration industry, the other half come from the franchise industry. So they understood the, the value of technology, so they started putting those things in place. So we have we've have that, so now they know how to run their business. We put technology in place for, for texting programs on how they can get more leads, and then, then we use it, uh, you know, very strongly uh, for, you know, PPC campaigns and, and how, mm -hmm. to, how to drive in customers. So those were things that were not done uh, early on, and now we, we're really uh, driving uh, those, those typical things that uh, a lot of people don't think about uh, make a big difference in, in your business. That's terrific. That's important. What, for our listeners, Gary, what is a typical day like for a Restoration One franchisee? I mean, I guess it depends, right? Because, I mean, some of them might be owner operators and, you know, some of them might just be uh, running the business. I mean, what, what is a typical day like? Yeah, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. It's going to be different based on uh, where they are in their, you mm -hmm. know, they may be the person. We have a, a, a training uh, going on right now. It's finishing up. We do a two week training program, and it's finishing up with 13 people in there one of our biggest classes we've ever had. So it depends on what stage there are, but mostly uh, they're going to they're gonna get up and they're going to meet with their team. They're going to have a salesperson on their team, and they're going to give them direction on sending them where to go based on our training, get them out, get everybody started, and then they're, they're going to, if, if they're the, the manager and not, the, not running the, uh, the actual, uh, doing, act, doing the work, that person is going to manage the technician on the jobs. They're going to go out, usually bid the jobs, and uh, and then they bring in the technician, get them started, and then help them monitoring. So their job is to go out and create relationships uh, mm -hmm. with people in, in the plumbing industry, uh, HVAC people, electricians, uh, property management. So most of their job is out developing relationships. That's great, and that's so important. One of the um, franchises that we had on our show years ago, Gary, was uh, Blue Frog Plumbing and Drain. And yeah. I know that you uh, you recently acquired them, didn't you? Maybe you could talk a little bit we about did. that. Yeah, we acquired them a, a few months ago. You know, one of the things that I've said uh, early on, after we got our systems and processes in place, had our franchisees successful and had this, uh, you know, not necessarily on uh, an autopilot, but but, you know, had the, the things in place that we would start looking for other brands or other concepts that would complement the restoration business. And it turns out that we work every single day with plumbers. And uh, this right. is a business that complements us very Makes well. Sense. So I started looking around and turned out that I knew these guys. They used to live in Waco, where I'm from. And right. uh, I knew, knew a little bit about them. And, you know, I'm, all, I'm also all about branding. And I right. love their brand. I love their name, what they did. And yeah. so uh, that's, 
they were at about the same level uh, that Restoration One was uh, when I stepped in. So I said, look, mm-hmm. if we take our same team, our same processes, and implement it there, we should have the same success. What are your plans to grow these, these complementary businesses then, Gary? So, uh, you know, for – let's just take it uh, – Restoration One – Blue Frog, we're going to continue to, to add to our team. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. in the last uh, two weeks, I've added a, a director of national accounts. I, I hired a VP of marketing. I hired a VP of, of national sales. All the people that we need to go out now and start really building both these companies nationwide uh, to bring us more leads in. And then in addition to that, uh, we're still having meetings on other companies that would even – uh, complement uh, the plumbing business. Mm. We had one last week, so we're going to continue to look for four or five concepts that all feed off each other to where they can continue to, you know, give referrals and go back and forth, or a franchisee could own all concepts and be able to cover every part of a home or business when they go in there. The majority of our listeners, Gary, we call them aspiring franchipreneurs. You know, most of them have it in their yeah. mind that they would like to get into franchising. I mean, from everything that you've learned up to this point, you know, you know, there's 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 so much out there today, isn't there? What advice would you give to yeah. our listeners in their quest to buy a franchise? Um, here's what I would say: is that you know, it, you when, when you're a prospective franchisee, you're out there, you're talking to several different concepts. Mm-hmm. You're talking to development people, and, and let's just yeah. face it, development people are going to tell you uh, about their business, and they're going to tell you right. all the good with the business. When you really want to know what a, a franchise is all about, talk to their franchisees. And we're not yeah. going to um, we're not going to do like some of the companies I've seen in the past where we direct you to our two or three people uh, that are going to say all great things. We're going to direct you to all right. of them. Here's my list. Call any of them because I want you to have the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the biggest response I've had come back is, it's, got, it's been kind of interesting. I ha- I've had some people come up to me and say, look, here's the one issue I have. And I said, okay, what is that? I'm not finding anybody that's got anything bad to say. And, and while that's not a issue, sometimes people think, well, what in the heck's going on? Well, you know, right. now that we have 150 locations, they know I'm not calling all 150. So, right. you know, I'm, I'm wise enough to know not everybody's happy all the time. But I think you'll find somebody, right. if things are just not necessarily going their way, they will all, will, all of them will still tell you that it is, we are working, we get up every day, go to bed every night, trying to figure out how do we drive revenue to our franchisees. Because at the end of the day, that's how I make money, too. So of course. It, uh, it does me no good to put dots on a map. I'm not looking to put dots on a map. I want to help people create, um, create wealth and create opportunity, and that's how we do it. That's terrific. That's great advice. Have you found more women getting involved in, in franchising, Gary? I recently wrote a paper on um, women, gender, and franchising. Um, do you find more women getting involved in this particular industry? We have. We had our first, I would say probably three months ago, had our first uh, female owner come on board, and she bought that's three great. locations. And then since then, we've seen others. And so uh, that's exciting. I mean, we we, yeah. we welcome everyone. I mean, there are – Everyone out there has the opportunity to build a business, and right. what you need is a system and process. Our systems and right. processes work for everybody. So here it is. Here's the handbook. Take it and go with it. So, yeah, we're we're seeing that, and I think that's a great trend. Uh, absolutely. I totally agree. So I, I can ask you the next question. I mean, where do you see Restoration 1, you know, if you could look into a crystal ball, Gary, maybe like three to five years down the road, where, where do you see Restoration 1? Yeah, you know, when I met with the franchisees at my very first conference and I came on board and took over, I uh, and we were sitting there with about, at that time, about 20 locations, and I said, look, uh, I want by the end of the year, we were in March, I said, I want to have 100 locations by the end of the year, 200 by the end of next year, and, uh, and 500 over the next five years. And, uh, you know, they looked at me like I was growing horns, and, and even my vendors – my, my vendors later that were in there said, yeah, we thought, you know, we've been, we've been in the industry 40 years. We said, yeah, Gary, right. And now everybody's going, hey, he really did do what he said. We did hit 100 that first year. Right. Uh, we should, uh, we're on track to hit the 200 this year. So we see us being not only in numbers, but we, have that, we want to have that reputation out there where we are the name to think of when people think about you know, uh, any uh, water restoration, smoke, mold, fire, they think of Restoration 1. So 
We're going to do that right. by by doing these by dropping them in one one city at a time, and then by creating a national uh, cat team that will go out and take care of uh, large catastrophes, working with our franchisees. So those things are in the in the work. So we're um, you know we're going to continue to grow. This year we added a contents program which drives more revenue. Revenue to the franchisees. So uh, our job is to keep finding ways to put money in their pockets. That's fantastic. What's the best way for our listeners, Gary, to get more information on Restoration One uh, as the franchise opportunity, of course, but even the service itself? Any websites that you'd like them to go to? Yes, yeah, same thing. So www.restoration1, and it's the number one, not spelled out, restoration1.com. Okay. And this website will take you for everything from buying a franchise to getting in touch with one of our franchisees. That's fantastic. And again, it's been an honor for me to finally get to speak with you. Again, I've been following your career for such a long time now. So again, it's a true privilege for me to speak with you, Gary. Uh, um, You know, it's been really fantastic. And I'd like to invite you back, you know, as you continue to grow, because I think Restoration One really has a fantastic franchise opportunity. Marty, I appreciate the opportunity. Same thing. I've heard many great things about you and really appreciate you having us on. Look forward to coming back again. Oh, thank you. This has been my pleasure, Gary. And we'll be right back with more franchise interviews. Coming up on segment two, you're going to hear what every franchisepreneur needs to know before buying a franchise. We're going to play a clip from our popular Great Quotes in Franchising podcast right here on Franchise Interviews. Are you one of those special people who are willing to go after your dreams and goals? Are you ready to fulfill that dream of owning your own business with the security of a proven brand, the opportunity to take control of your future, and own a Rita's Italian Ice franchise is within your reach. Rita's is seeking success-oriented individuals who are ready to make a change in their life, and Rita's offers unparalleled training and support to assure your success. And did you know the frozen treat industry is a recession-proof industry and there are Rita's in 23 states currently with 540 stores open. Rita's Italian Ice has been around for 25 years and is listed as a top performing franchise by the Wall Street Journal. Now here's the really good part. Rita's Italian Ice is a unique and amazing taste treat. It's smoother than a snow cone and it combines ice with real fresh fruit. The real fruit adds dramatically to the taste, and it comes in over 40 flavors. The ice and fruit are mixed on site and made fresh daily, and it is delicious. You'll want to know more about this exciting and successful franchise opportunity. Go to www.ownaritas.com and get all your questions answered. That's www.ownaritas.com to take control of your dreams and future today. You don't want to wait any longer to be a part of this adventure. www.ownaritas.com Hi everyone, this is Marty McDermott from Franchise Interviews and welcome to another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising. For each podcast you get to hear a great quote in franchising. You know, we've been hosting franchise interviews now over eight years and over 400 shows, and during that time, we've had some incredible quotes on our show. Today, you're going to get to hear from Chris Simic, who is the founder of FranchiseTeacher.com, and Chris has over 30 years of business and franchise experience as an independent business owner, a franchisee, and a franchisor. And Chris said something very profound that we haven't heard on our show in over eight years. He mentioned that you have to almost work harder to fail at franchising than to succeed in franchising, and he explains why. Most people, about 90% I think I've seen, buy a business other than they first looked at. Wow, that's amazing. So that's we it's interesting, isn't it? Business. I mean, that's, that's a big number too, isn't it, Chris? You know, that you know, most people, they go in with these certain expectations and they come out with, with, with something different, you know, and, and I find that fascinating. I absolutely, it, it never ceases to astound me, but I think that speaks to the to the, uh, the value of franchising as a as a business model and a business method because right. people don't have to uh, be in something just because they know it. And quite candidly, sometimes 
getting involved in a business that you would rather do that you were not involved in allows you the the luxury of taking uh, a new career path and to develop something you never would have had the opportunity to had it not been you know systematized and prioritized for you. You know, in franchising, it's said that. You have to really almost work harder to fail than to succeed because if you have a good franchise system, if right. you follow directions, you have to almost purposely not follow them to not do well. That's true. That's fantastic. We have this, this great quote in franchising. I, I think we're going to put that one in there, Chris. I, I think that's very original and it's, it's very true. What advice would you give to our listeners? You know, we find that most of them, they're just beginning their search to buy a franchise, Chris. And we find that, you know, most of them just simply, they, they don't even know where to begin, like you were saying. What advice would you give to them? I, I do, um, when I speak to, to people looking at franchises, I, I, I give them three different pieces of advice. One, make sure you're looking for business for the right reason. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people have things happen in their life. They lose a job or something happens, and they react and, and maybe say, well, okay, maybe I'll go buy a business. That may not be the, the reason to do it versus having the luxury of selectivity that here's my opportunity that was yeah. created by some adversity. Second thing is that they have to make sure that they are – able to be franchisees, uh, that not everybody is designed to be able to, to follow the systems procedures and, 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 the, and the processes it takes to be a successful franchise owner. And then I tell them quite candidly is pick a couple of the industries and the price ranges uh, that, that may have interest to you and then kind of pin down from there, either using the resources of a, uh, a consultant or a, bro- or a broker or, or a team member or, or on their own, either way. But I think that if they, if they take their time, follow the steps, and do it for the right reasons, uh, they'll be on a much smoother pathway uh, to, to success in, in, in owning their own business. That's well said. What's what's in the future then for franchise teacher, Chris? I mean, where do you see the company three to five years down the road? Well, Marty, we've been uh, ex- extremely fortunate, and blessed that the the business has has has, has been around, you know, through Century Franchise Group for many years. And our new franchise teacher uh, dot com has, has taken off. We're representing right now, uh, you know, seven uh, plus brands. I think in five years our, our focus will really be even more fine-tuned. As the, as the consumer or the prospective uh, business owner is looking for more and more specific information, breaking down to teach, coach, consult, and advise, I think will be, um, will be a way for us to assist people in what they need. You know, people, again, don't know what they don't know, but right. I think the information overload, uh, sometimes discourages people too early. They say, I, this is too much for me to process. Mm. But we can break it That's down true. into bite-sized pieces. I think more and more people, especially the younger generation, who are looking for the advice and the information they want when they want it, I think is you know going to do nothing more than uh, continue. Then our next business venture, which launches at the end of this year, uh, will, is looking to capture all the different franchise brands around the world and put them into one place. So it's, it's, we're, we're, we're looking forward to uh, a future in franchising is going nowhere but growing, you know, as you right on right. a long time, too, the number of franchise opportunities. And the world's getting to be a smaller place. I think you're going to find a yeah. lot of opportunities coming in and going out of, of different marketplaces in different countries uh, accessible to more people. That's fantastic. What's the best way, Chris, for our listeners to get <clears throat> more information on FranchiseTeacher.com? Obviously, FranchiseTeacher.com, but any numbers you'd like them to call or email addresses? Well, actually, Mario, I, we appreciate uh, you know, www.FranchiseTeacher.com. And okay. my, my business partner, Dave, and I offer them the free one-hour consultation. Fill out the form okay. and take Great. advantage of it. That's fantastic. I want to thank you again, Chris, for I, you know, finally coming on the show, you know, it, it's, I've been following your career for a long time now, you know, and I have just been very impressed with with, with everything that you've done, you know. So when I, when I saw this, I, I mentioned to you we don't typically um, call people to come on the show, you know, but but I had to have you specifically on the show. So it was an honor and a privilege to have you on the show today, Marty Ditto. And again, congratulations on your um, uh, PhD, Doctor. I have read your thesis, and I would recommend it reading if people can get oh, through that's uh, the information. I really appreciate that you read it, too, because that, that, that's an honor coming from you. So that's fantastic. Well, I want to thank you again, Chris. Thank and we'll you. be right back with more franchise interviews. Franchise interviews. From Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia, you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews.